G'day Tubers, so today I thought I haven't got anything to do, I haven't got any other projects to do or anything that you haven't already seen processing these cells. So I thought I'd do something fun, a little bit destructive perhaps and look I know the, I probably know the results of this test but I've got a few things laying around I'd like to play with. So I've got a solar panel, I've got an old solar panel out there, a little um, 36 volt 190 watt panel. An old PWM charger. This old girl I've had since my very first playing around with solar experiments. And I think I got one of my little battery, pa battery packs that I've completely abused. So these cells are worthless. They're all sub uh, probably 1200. So they're all useless. So what I plan to do is clean this one up a little bit, just maybe so I get some sort of electrical conductivity here. Rip all the bus bars off and clean them all up. Oh, that didn't go so well. Rip all the bus bars off, clean them all up, and then hook them up to the solar panel and just... Look, we all know what's going to happen, right? There's something that you're not supposed to do. But it might be an interesting test and... Hello. Shits and giggles, why not? So let's clean this up, get it all soldered up. We're just going to do a, um, what, 6P3S? Uh, so take it from there and see where we go. We'll put it in the middle of the backyard, hook a solar panel up with some nice wires, put a time-lapse camera on it, and see if I'm just lucky enough to actually get this thing starting to hiss or, or whatever. I don't think it's going to catch fire, but... I'll put some disconnects and stuff on it so it's reasonably safe, but this is for fun and it was never supposed to be safe. It was just supposed to be, what happens when? There we go, 12.3 volts. So now I'll go through and charge all these ones up. I'm just gonna charge them up to um, fully charged so the test actually doesn't take too much, too too long. And I'll solder it all, solder all the, the solar cables to it. And we'll try and charge her up, see what happens. Let's do this. It's a little bit too close, I've gotta move it away yet, but I got the charge controller. I was trying to get the charge controller in the shop, but it's not working, so I'm gonna move it away. Um, a charge controller off of eBay. It is a cheap, dodgy charge controller. A lot of us have used them. They're um, really good for getting into the game. And I've got, obviously, I've got charger for my phone because the phone's going to go flat pretty quick. And I've got that just onto the battery pack. And it's doing stop motion. Or what do you call it? Slow motion. A 190 watt panel. Wired directly in. It's got a fuse down there on the ground. And I'm going to see what effects putting an eBay charger has on putting a, on, a, on a 12 volt lithium pack. And see how fast it kills. It's going to kill it. There's no doubt it's going to kill it. It's just how it kills it. So let's start this test and I'll see you in a few hours. Okay, we're about two hours in. We are still going. We, we've had some problems. We've had to put the fan on the phone to stop it from overheating and I had to put a piece of paper over the screen to stop the sun from hitting it. <laughs> She's getting pretty hot. So we're out here. Oh look, we got a toy. Let's take a photo. And we see... Play. She's getting warmer. 48 degrees. There we go. Starting to warm up. See if I can get the crosshairs on that. 50 degrees. The battery's starting to warm up after two hours. It's a bit hard with all the sun out here. She's pretty warm. 
She's starting to warm up nicely. Certainly a lot quicker than I thought she would have warmed up. Yeah. That's where the iPhone version of it would come in handy. Okay. We are about two and a half hours in. And I'm just trying to get as close to this as I can with the camera without getting my face too close to it. Nothing's happened yet. There is a bit of an odour. Not horrible. Not overly in your face. Let's see how close I can get to this uh, charger. So it's 14.3 on that. 31 degrees out here. And charging at 4.3 amps. So she's still pumping some juice in. And again, try and get a bit closer. But Not much happening yet. We'll continue testing. Well, tubers, that was any climactic. Two hours and 40 minutes in. Uh, what have we got? The charge control is not liking that. It's almost zero volts. The charge controller's not very happy. That's at six volts. Oh, she's a bit warm. Let's grab the thermal camera and have a look what's going on. We got it at 70 degrees. There we go, she's nice and warm. I have to wait until I see the, the slow motion footage and see what happened. But tubers, she didn't catch on fire, so that's pretty anticlimactic. Rightio, here we are back in the workshop, and that was a lot, a lot, a lot less dramatic than I thought it would be. We got the thermal camera sitting here now. Uh, we are at least 10 to 12 minutes after I pulled it out. You can see one cell just there in the cross hatches is just smoking hot. And let's turn this over. We got voltage of nine volts, so I'll get rid of that. Turn this over to the other side. Obviously, you can't see the cells inside, but. Then we got one that's just ripping hot on that side as well. So that's the cross hatches saying it's 70. Go down to there, it's 53. So, geez, that's hot. Spin that round. You can see those ones in the center there are way hotter. That center group are all really hot. Spin it over the other way. It seems to be hotter towards the outsides. I wonder if it's got something to do with um, the positive sides hotter. Okay, so what was the result of this interestingly boring test that took an awfully long time to do? Um, first and foremost, this broke. As you can see from the video a few minutes back, the screen went... I, I, I was moving the camera around, I didn't get a very good shot, but the screen went very, very dim um, a minute or so later the screen went out and this completely died and now won't even power up anymore. So this died. Why did that die? Um, several of these cells went short circuit um, and just started dropping current into them and, and um, turned them into heating elements. So had this have not failed, which you know it's also had a hard life too so maybe it failed for other reasons but it failed it doesn't work anymore ended up having to just simply cut the wires off because it was getting so hot. Um, if this had have stayed connected to this for another half an hour, I reckon this would have gotten so hot, it would have easily caught on fire. Um, the temperature was rising very, very fast. And the temperature of this these cells here stayed hot for several hours after we disconnected it. Like for the first 20, uh, 20, 30, 40 minutes, they were hot to touch. You couldn't touch them, they were so hot. And then after that, the whole bank stayed warm for about two hours. The only assumption I can get is because these cells on either end still work and they were dumping any extra energy, and this is completely dead flat now, 
any extra energy into these cells and just keeping the stove element warm. So it wasn't as drastic as I had first hoped and it wasn't fire and brimstone. Um, but I think it was a safe, fun test and yeah, maybe still worth uploading. We'll find out. So YouTube, that's all I got for now. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.